Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings, Buzz Nation. Thank you for always coming to watch our videos and for subscribing, for liking, for sharing, for buying us coffee. We appreciate so much. So, from 5th of June, eh? mm -hmm. just some few days ago, to 8th of June, there's been the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum, SPF, in Russia which we have seen a lot of people attending, especially in Africa. And at the same time, we are seeing the foreign minister of Russia, Lavrov, going around African countries, you know, for operation, mm -hmm. operation with countries. We saw him going to Guinea Conakry, saw him going to Republic of Congo, Central African Republic of Chad, we saw him going to Kina Faso. And a lot of good things are happening with the cooperation of Africa with Russia. But we also saw, during the SPF, we saw countries like Sierra Leone going to Russia. And we saw the Minister of Mines and Mineral Resources, Julius Matai, talking about Russia cooperation in the part of strengthening mining cooperation. We just remember the First Lady of uh, yeah. Sierra Leone sometimes mm -hmm. back was very eloquent about how the western nations comes come to extract their minerals by blackmail and when you say no these guys will fund the opposition to oust you or to turn the government around so that they can continue mining and this could be a great development because this has not been seen with russia or china so the Leone is seeking to strengthen mining cooperation with russia that is the country Minister of Mines and Mineral Resources who said that. And uh, Julius Matai said Sierra Leone is to hold talks with Russia group of diamond mining companies Al Rosa, which has expressed interest in mining diamonds in the country. Remembering our first lady from Sierra Leone, she said that Sierra Leone has the best diamonds in the world. Mm -hmm. So I think that is why. The West African countries is negotiating with Russia-based aluminium company Rusal to open a bauxite mining concession with its territory. They also mine bauxite, which is the ore which holds aluminium. We use a lot of aluminium in utensils. Eh? Freetown has, and apart from utensils, even the, the electrical cables, mm -hmm. the wires, the mains are aluminium. Freetown has signed a memorandum of understanding with Zarbek Geology, an international projects operator for the largest Russian geological holding, Rosio. The document will allow Zarbek Geology to work in the country, country's fossil sector. Okay, good for Sierra Leone. But my problem is what we have been talking about. Until when will our geologists have the capability of exploring our minerals? And telling the government to you, we have found bauxite, we have found gold, and you can mine it. It's in this area. And the government will find its experts and will buy machinery for that. Mm -hmm. And they'll mine that minerals and take it to a processing plant which they will have constructed. And they will process that minerals. For example, aluminium, they will sell it as aluminium, aluminium as it is, mm -hmm. or they will make whatever pans they make utensils okay. they make cables and all that until when we see africa mining our gold why do we need to keep on running to look for investors like we don't have investors in africa mm -hmm. and we, like i keep on saying this you find like if you go around africa you find young people who are below 30 years and have a lot of money they some are musicians mm -hmm. you find davido is he mining anywhere? No. You find Barnabas. These people have a lot of money. You see them spending on Lamborghini and all that. Why don't you give them a deal? Tell them, I want you guys to, I'm creating a private public company in which you own like 50% of the shares and the government will own like 49 or, or say 50-50 or 51-50 or 59-49. 51 49, you know, when it's 51, the government becomes a public. Mm. So tell them you are Africans, you belong to this place, you are sons and daughters 
invest in this company. Let us do this. Let us mine. Let us buy machinery. Let us do this. You'll be getting this with your, you and your generation. You'll forever be rich. And you will do this. But these guys on Iran, if we hear, like, for example, you say Mozambique has found natural gas. France. Do you imagine Knubu doing that, having a sit down with the likes of Tavidu yeah, and, uh, and, and Dangote and yes. uh, Banapol? Do you imagine him? Yeah, I do. I imagine. Without him going to get directive from his masters. Yes. What I'm trying to say is that until we remove these puppets, we can never see this thing happening yeah. because there's no way that France will agree to a deal that give the young people of Africa, let them be the ones to show Africa that it's possible. They've tried to distract us from the development in Burkina Faso by telling us that people are being killed, civilians are being killed, it's a failed state. You can't tell me that Tinubu can just him by himself say, hey, Davido, Bana boy, let's do this. It's impossible. Why, why don't you think it? Why do you think it's impossible? Because he takes orders from his master. You see, the one thing that has made Ibrahim Tare able mm -hmm. to work so fast and effectively mm -hmm. He started something he calls the presidential initiative. Mm. And I remember in Kenya, the former president, Uru Kenyatta, had a presidential initiative, which instead of things going, you know, the oh. long way, the bureaucracy and all that, mm. it comes direct from the state, the president. Mm -hmm. And if something like this, a mining company which is owned by the government, it will come directly from the government. And you know this thing of supporting our own, mm. I've seen it with Ibrahim Tari. That guy is brilliant and we have a lot of things to learn from yeah. him. Some weeks ago, one or two weeks, I saw him opening a shea butter company, mm. a company that makes, you know, those uh, yeah. products. But he was launching it. It was not for the government. It would never belong to the government. It was by a certain lady in Burkina Faso. But that lady has employed a lot of young women. Scaling the project. So he was launching it and encouraging others to do that. Yeah, Burkina Faso Traore does that. He went and took young people, showed them how to farm, said, we support you, we'll build mm. holes for you, and we want you to upscale this exactly. thing to the rest of the country. You see, now, that you see is now he's trusting his young people to because do that. Because he doesn't have anybody to report to. He doesn't have to take orders from somebody. So until we are at a point where Africa is fully liberated, and right now we are not, we have neocolonialism, people coming in from outside to tell us what to do and what not to do and how we can rule or govern our country. So highly impossible if we have leaders like that. But AES has been an example. We will keep talking about AES because this is the kind of example that we need in Africa. You remember Magufuli was able to do Exactly, because like also that. he was refusing. Yes, let me tell you a story about president, the former president of Tanzania, Magufuli. When Magufuli was president, mm -hmm. Kenya used to supply chicks to Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And at one point, if you remember, there was some uproar because at the border, some chicks were lit. Mm -hmm. They were burnt mm -hmm. to ashes. <laughs> chicks coming from Kenya to, to be Tanzania. grown as chicken in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. At the border, they were lit on fire and everything burnt. Eh? And he said, no chick is coming from Kenya to Tanzania. You see? He told his young people, I want you to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay? I want you to farm those chicks. Today, do you know who's supplying chicks to Kenya? Things have changed. Tanzania. So that's what we need. These guys, we, they are supplying things from Europe, from America, from China. Mm -hmm. If we woke up today, in the next five years, we have turned down around the wheel. We'll Just be like supplying that. them. Yeah. But will our Who leaders do that? <laughs> Not our leaders. Will our politicians do that? Hmm? Oh my goodness. It's flying, 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 yeah. flying, flying, South Korea, Italy, Russia. Mm. I don't know what. And this will serve as an encouragement for our young people, young Pan Africanists, to maybe we need to start these conferences where we just call on each other, um, support each other, sharpen each other, you know, just educate each other about the real issues of Africa because. We are troubled as the African community with all these old leaders who have no vision for the continent. I think us as young people need to come together and we are glad that the Bas Nation, you guys as citizens, are always behind us saying, we like your work, continue waking up because a lot of us are just sleeping. And until we have young people who can say, 
I am ready to take up this leadership role and make a difference for my country. It's going to take a while because look at South Africa. ANC has been in power for how many years? 30 years. South Africans are crying. Nothing. When you look at the leadership in ANC, old women, old men. Why? Is it because young people can't lead? Is it because we are not capable? The same thing that the West is doing to us, now our elders are doing it to us as the young Africans. The West sees us as not capable, not being able to. And now it's trickling down to our leaders who think that young people cannot do it. So it's time for us to change this. And, uh, and that generation we mm. have of politicians, I will not call them leaders, mm. that generation of politicians, mm. 90% of them think that Africans can, are unable, Africans are inferior, inferior yeah. and we have to go to the West to get no, what we want. Guys, let us know what you think in the comment section. If you would like to support us do that initiative of maybe starting those yeah, conferences start. and all that. True. Have people like PLO and Mama to come and knock it into our heads. Yeah, like, yeah. This is how you, if you want to take up a leadership position, how do you position yourself yeah. in society? So let us know not just in the comment section, we have an email. It's on the screen. We have an email on the description. Just don't mind reaching us out. We'll talk about this. Yeah. We need someone to push us, to tell us, you can to do this. To guide us. Yeah, yeah to guide us. Mm -hmm. And you guys are the best. Let us know what you think about all this. we see you in the next video. Bye-bye.